Good evening. Good evening. We welcome our parishioners and visitors to St. Jerome Catholic Church. Thank you for being with us to celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass on the first Sunday of Advent. As we prayerfully prepare ourselves for the liturgy, please take a moment to make sure cell phones are turned off. Please stand. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends in Christ, today we begin the season of Advent. We open our hearts to God's love as we prepare to welcome Christ in our lives and in our homes. The candles in our Advent wreaths will remind us that Jesus Christ came to the conquest of darkness of sin and to lead us into the light of his glorious kingdom. Let us pray. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light these candles of this wreath. May the wreath of this light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he quickly and not delay, we ask this, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. said to his disciples, be constantly on the watch 
Stay awake. You do not know when the master of the house is coming. O oh, Jesus, your voice sounds through the house of my world. Be on your guard. Stay awake. Yet I hardly hear you. Busy with so much, I go about the things I do like a servant trapped in household routine, hardly giving a thought to what my life is about. My spirit within has grown tired, and you, my God, seem far away. How can I hear your voice today? Speak to my heart during this season of grace, as you spoke to your prophets and saints. Remind me again of the journey you call me to make and the work you would have me do. I am your servant, O Lord. Speak to me in this holy season and turn my eyes to watch for your coming. O Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, desire of every nation, savior of all peoples, come and dwell among us. My dear friends, in order to worthily celebrate this Mass, we call to mind our sins. I confess, so mighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Grant, O merciful God, we pray, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Travel, Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not rise, raise the sword against another nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to be to God. God. 
Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go. Because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let, Let us go. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go. For the peace of Jerusalem, may those who love you prosper. May peace be within your walls, prosperity in your buildings. Let us go. of my brothers and friends, I will say, peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will pray for your good. Let us go. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you know the time. It is the hour now for you to awake from your sleep. For our salvation is nearer now than we first believed. The night is advanced. The day is at hand. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in promiscuity and lust, not in rivalry and jealousy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the desires of the flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 
The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. In those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day that Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. So will it be also at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be out in the field, one will be taken, one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken, and one will be left. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening. So here we are again, the beginning of a new liturgical year. And now we hear from a new gospel, the gospel of Matthew, which is actually the bridge between the Old Testament and the New Testament. So today, I look around the church and see some new decorations, the Advent wreath, my favorite color, purple. It's displayed very prominently and will be for the next several weeks. It's one of my favorite times of the year because I love the anticipation we begin to feel as we celebrate the threefold coming of Christ. First, into the world at his incarnation. Second, into our lives at our baptism. And third, into the world again as he returns in glory. In our readings today, we actually talk about what we will hear over the next few weeks. And they are all about the coming of Christ and the end times when he will come again. Jesus' message in the gospel today gives us three simple points. He is coming back. We do not know when. And we had better be ready. So the first point. He really is coming back. The second coming will be just as real, just as literal as the first, though we do not know the details of how. For instance, whether the sky will come apart, how everyone on earth will see him at once, and many other details. Divine revelations come to us as a pretty much need-to-know basis. He has told us one more important detail that we need to know, that one will be taken and one will be left. Not everyone will be taken to heaven. And that's sort of scary. We don't want to believe that. So why do we believe that? Because he said so. If we can't trust Christ, we can't trust anybody about anything. So our second point, we do not know when this will happen. Maybe tonight. And maybe in a thousand years from now. What we can be sure of is this. We cannot be sure when he will come. He says he will come like a thief in the night when we least expect it. He deliberately does not tell us the time so that we will be ready at every time. Or at least we should. Beginning right now. Now the third point is the most practically important point. The readiness part. He will come for the whole world at the end of time. But he will also come to each one of us when we die. And we do not know when we will die. 
So we must be sure we are ready at any time. Nothing could possibly be more important than that fact. Our whole self, our soul, our eternity actually depends on it. The whole world is not as important as that. And Jesus said so himself. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? From Matthew chapter 16. Jesus is asking us life's most important question. Are we ready to die? Are we right with God? Are we his children, his people? Are we part of his mystical body? These questions do not mean, are we good enough to go to heaven? Nobody is. And the great saints are the first to say that. The question instead is whether we have received the life of Christ into our soul by faith and baptism, and whether we have repented of our sins and are sincerely trying to live in obedience to his will and in charity with our neighbor. So an important point here, I said sincerely trying, not totally succeeding. You see, that is why Jesus gave us the sacrament of confession or reconciliation. And the church gave us this penitential season because it is a penitential season. What could possibly more, be more important than honestly asking yourself this question? If Jesus came back tonight... What would you say to him? Because he will come back. And you will meet him. And you don't know when that last day of your life or anyone's life will be. What will you say to Jesus when you meet him? Now Jesus' parable about the Pharisee and the tax collector found in Luke chapter 18 gives us two possible answers to that question. The worst one is the Pharisee's answer. Lord, look how good I am. The best one is the tax collector's answer. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. You see, the Pharisee understood neither God nor himself. And the tax collector understood both. During this season of Advent, we are called by Christ and the church to focus on the coming of Christ and the preparation of our very souls. The only way we can do that is to seriously ask ourselves these important questions, and we shouldn't put it off for a better time. You see, we have a God that wants for our happiness and for our reconciliation with him, And he is urging us to take the time to make things right. Not only in this season, this penitential season, as I have said, but it is also one of celebration. And we have quite a lot to celebrate. And we should rightly celebrate, but most of the time we tend to look around and we are mainly focused on the incarnation aspect of Christ's coming at Christmas. We sort of tend to ignore or downplay the other two comings of Christ into our lives and the second coming during Advent. You see, we think of Advent primarily in terms of Christmas, which is Christ's first coming into the world. I think we should actually step back a moment and learn something from our children. They are happy and excited because they begin to anticipate the coming of Santa Claus. In the same way, we need to realize that Jesus is, in fact, coming. Why aren't we as happy about his coming as our kids are about Santa Claus? So let's do some comparisons. I found this the other day. Santa only comes from the North Pole, but Jesus comes from heaven. Santa only comes with eight flying reindeer, but Jesus comes with legions of angels. Santa comes mainly for children, but Jesus comes for every one of us. Santa's gifts are earthly, 
but Jesus's are heavenly. Santa's gifts last for a while, but Jesus's last for eternity. Santa Claus doesn't take you back up to his home in the North Pole, but Jesus takes you back up to his home in heaven. So why aren't we more happy about Jesus' coming than our children are about Santa's coming? Is it because we are much smarter than our kids? Or is it the other way around? It's another important question to add to the mix. So think about it. So in conclusion, I pray that you may be blessed this Advent season in your preparation for Christ and for Christmas, for him coming into your lives at the multiple points that he presents himself. May it prove fruitful in your faith journey, and may it draw you ever closer to Christ himself. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, one the Father for all ages, God from God, and from light, true God from true God, God and not me, consubstantial with the Father, to him all things. Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious body. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day. In the glorious of the scriptures, he ascended to heaven and seated at your right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father, the Son, is the Lord, and Holy Father, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I bless the one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We lift our hearts to you, dear Father, as we prepare ourselves for the coming of your Son into the world. Have us ready our heart, mind, and will as we say. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole church, summoned again to wake from sleep, to throw off the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light, that we may respond joyously to this message. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of us gathered today, may our discernment and decisions this week become a manifestation of the coming of your Son, the coming of love and life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those whose advent is full of pain, illness, loneliness, hunger, and poverty, that we may be willing to reach out to them and assist them in their every need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick and hospitalized, May they feel the healing power of Christ and find comfort and hope in his constant presence. Welping, welcoming God, receive from our hands the loved ones we return to you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the intentions of our family and friends, for the intentions in our book of prayers, and for the special intentions we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Ray and Ann Baster, from whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God, our Father, direct our hearts as we prepare for the coming of your communion and salvation among us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Cries out in the wind. 
valley be filled, let every mountain be humbled, let every valley be filled. Here is your God coming with your vindication. All can be Desert and wasteland will bloom. Desert and wasteland will bloom. Glory and splendor will fill the land. Desert and wasteland will bloom. Those who are blind will be seen. Those who are deaf will then hear. Pray with the brethren, my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below, grant us the prize of eternal redemption, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Let Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. For we assume at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh. And so fulfill the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all that is last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and angels and thrones and the dominions and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end. We acclaim. You are indeed the Holy Lord and the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, 
so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took the bread and giving thanks and broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and bury our bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him in him, O God, the Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we are always free from sin, and safe from all distresses we await a blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, is at your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Long to see you. 
beneath your wing, so may we come to rest where angels sing. Your roads have led us, Lord, cross desert sand. We place our hopes and dreams within your hand. Beyond the moon and stars, as deep as night, so great our hunger, Lord, to see Let us pray. May this mystery of the Lord in which we have participated profit us, we pray. For even now as we walk amid the passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures, to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. New adult classes are being planned. They will begin early January. Keep an eye on the newsletter in the coming weeks for details. Next Sunday, the 4th, beginning at 10.15 a.m., we are holding a nativity event for all ages with crafts, a cookie walk, and general good fun. St. Nicholas himself has checked his calendar twice and assured us he will be in attendance to visit and take pictures. We need home-baked cookies for the cookie walk. You can drop off a plate of cookies throughout the week or bring them in before any mass before the event. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. People of East, the time is near of the crowning of the year. Make your Sing today, love the 